Do you know that there are an estimated 100 billion galaxies in the universe? And with the improved telescope technology in space, the number is likely to increase to about 200 billion. It is an inevitable fact that the deeper we look into the cosmos, the more galaxies we will discover. A study from 2016 estimates that the observable universe contains 2 trillion or 2 million million galaxies. But the question is, what have we found so far and how our scientists are probing into them? Recently, a team of researchers from the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bengaluru, have discovered a faint but star-forming galaxy around 136 million light years away. The discovery was not easy as this galaxy was hiding in front of a much brighter, bigger galaxy. The optical images indicate that the galaxy has a ghost-like appearance that shows hints of stars still forming within it. In this row, the PBNS team reached out to researchers from IIA including Jyoti Yadav, Mosumi Das and Sudhanshu Barve to understand and unravel the mystery of the newly found galaxy. We observed a sample of galaxies in the Southern Hemisphere with the South African telescope. And Sudhanshu at that time was in South Africa and he observed these galaxies. And this galaxy that we observed was one of those. And we thought it was an interacting galaxy. But when we looked at the UVIT data, UVIT is a Astrosat Indian telescope. It's India's first space telescope. So when we looked at our UV data from the UVIT telescope, we found that it was very abnormal. The look of the galaxy was very strange. And then we looked at uh, more data. We looked at optical data. And that's when actually Jyoti, Jyoti discovered that actually it wasn't one galaxy, but it was two galaxies. And it was a superposition along our line of sight. That's why we thought it was one galaxy. So I think I'll now give it to Jyoti, because she can now tell us about the next part. Yeah, so as you mentioned that this is in the foreground of the galaxy in GC 6902A. So uh, we were just studying the interacting galaxy which is in GC 6902A and interacting galaxies can affect the star formation activity in galaxies. So we were trying to understand uh, how is the star formation activity in the interacting galaxy in GC 6902A. So for that, we were using FUV images and FUV images were taken with the, the help of UVIT telescope on AstroSat. As ma'am mentioned, it is India's first space-based observatory and FUV traces the recent star formation activity in galaxies. So using FUV data, we noticed that there are some star forming clumps which are present in the southern part of the galaxy and this is 6902A. And these star forming complexes, which are very bright in the FU map, they were very faint in the optical and near infrared map. So this prompted us to look into the, these features into more details. And that is why we uh, estimated the distance of those star forming complexes. And we found out that these star forming complexes are at a distance of 136 million years. However, the, dis the galaxy that we were studying is at a distance of around 825 million light years which is much farther than these star forming complexes. So this suggested us that these star forming complexes are part of a separate galaxy, which is in the foreground of the galaxy and this is 6902A. And due to their visual overlapping, they were mistakenly classified as an interacting system. And we named this foreground galaxy as UVIT J2022. When you actually look at the sky, we look at the, the, the 2D projection of a, a, a 3D view actually. So like uh, uh, Moshmi and Jyoti mentioned that, that this galaxy uh, uh, was in the foreground of a big bright galaxy. So one thing uh, apart from uh, uh, measuring the distances uh, uh, that Jyoti has done, we also wanted to uh, basically uh, show that uh, or distangle that these are two separate galaxies. So uh, uh, so, so the, the near infrared data, uh, the, near in, uh, the data that we observed from the South African uh, telescope that help us actually uh, in two ways. So one is basically uh, the distangling uh, this uh, this galaxy uh, visually uh, that that image is uh, that uh, that we can uh, basically show that the background galaxy is different than the foreground galaxy, and then uh, uh, measuring the the mass of these two different galaxies. So how we do it? Uh, so we basically have the image in uh, near infrared band. 
and then we basically simulate the galaxies uh, with with the various uh, uh, the, the mathematical function that represent the different parts of the galaxy and then in this way we basically uh, model or simulated uh, these two galaxies uh, and then using that simulation we able to separate out these two galaxies so this near infrared data uh, uh, help us in doing that and once we would able to separate out these two galaxies uh, we basically then uh, uh, then uh, uh using the, uh, the another uh, mathematical formulation we able to calculate the stellar mass of uh, both galaxies and what we found was that uh, obviously the the galaxy that was uh, in the background was much more massive than the the foreground galaxy uh, and then that basically helped us to uh, again um, uh, investigate that that this is this is this is a very different galaxy than uh, than what we see when these galaxies are are sort of combined because of the projection effect the velocity and metallicity distribution maps and the star formation history indicate that uvit j2022 has undergone three bursts of star formation and the latest episode is ongoing hence we ask the researchers about the new horizons that this galaxy will open for humankind the first importance of our discovery is that of course we discovered a new galaxy which was not listed in the catalogs before so that was great and this research showed that the superposition of galaxies can lead to us missing galaxies so that was that was one great uh, point in the study the second thing was that we found that it's a very diffuse galaxy and diffuse galaxies are now quite a exciting topic in research because now in our local universe people are finding that there are more and more diffuse galaxies faint galaxies and that can be very important for estimating the matter in our universe because previously we missed them we did not we did not detect them so detecting a very diffuse low surface density galaxy is very important for understanding the mass distribution in our universe so that i think was the second point the third point was that you we could see the star formation had been triggered as you said in three bursts so that means these diffuse galaxies which previously people thought did not form stars can be triggered into star formation provided they have some trigger you know maybe another galaxy went past it or maybe it had enough gas to suddenly you know start forming stars so i i think these three are the basic uh, basic uh, points in our discovery but let me also uh, ask jyoti to tell you something more because i have just given it briefly yeah so they uh, i just wanted to mention that uh, there could be uh, similar galaxies which are star forming and very bright in uh, fuv or h alpha which are the tracers of recent star formation activity but they go missing in the optical and uh, near infrared surveys because they are very faint in the those wavelengths so using fuv and h alpha tracers for uh, these galaxies will help us in detecting new galaxies new star forming galaxies uh, i would also like to uh, add uh, something here uh, so uh, as as uh, we know that uh, this foreground galaxy is uh, a very low surface brightness galaxy or a faint galaxy which is forming star stars so uh, this is uh, this is what we are basically uh, chasing now now the the given that uh, we have uh, so much advances in technology and we would like to uh, uh, build uh, uh, the instrument uh, telescope uh, such that we can basically chase these kind of a low surface brightness uh, uh, features galaxies in the universe that basically help us to understand uh, uh, how basically universe uh, is is basically a uh, build uh, so that's why we are uh, uh, looking after a bigger and bigger telescope we want to detect uh, fainter and fainter object uh, to basically find out these missing uh, uh, low surface brightness uh, objects uh, which otherwise from the small telescope we would not able to uh, discover more than ever communicating scientific researches to the public has become essential 
It is a collective responsibility to understand and disseminate scientific information in a language that is easily understood by the common man. Let's hear what the researchers have to say on that. One of the things is all the institutes that we have in our country now are having very active public outreach programs. So in the public outreach programs, we try to explain uh, science, the science especially that we are doing, to the school students, to um, college graduates, but also to the general public using, um, you know, certain sky watching days or lectures, public lectures. Uh, then we have, of course, the science day every uh, February. So uh, using various events like this, but we have also started a lot more aggressive programs now where we will be trying to visit rural areas and to also um, you know, explain our work and in general sp explain astronomy in the regional languages so it is more understandable because you know not everyone uh, uses English. So um, we have started, at least in IA, we have started these programs rather aggressively. This is one of the things. Um, and maybe Jyoti and Sudhansh can also contribute. Yeah, I, I would like to add here is that uh, what happens is that when we publish something, then also because it is written in a, in a scientific language, so we need to uh, actually translate it into a, a, a level where uh, we can convey our science to, uh, 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 to our uh, community. So it, it basically takes some time uh, to do that. Hence, as you asked that why it has taken uh, some time uh, to get it uh, uh, out in the public because uh, that is very important. The language that uh, we should use should be understandable to uh, to most of the public and we should be able to convey our work very efficiently. So so that is that is one of the work uh, uh, that, that we are also started doing and it is not only just in, 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 in one language but it is in a multiple language and as Moshmi said that uh, uh, these works that we do, uh, we take it to uh, uh, various people, uh, whether they are from the uh, city uh, or they are from the villages. Uh, so, so that is that is why uh, some of these things uh, takes uh, some time to get into the, the public domain. We asked researchers about their future projects and interestingly got to know that from exploring supermassive black holes to finding new galaxies, our Indian researchers are probing into the universe with, with the intention to answer the unanswered question. One of the things that we are exploring with telescopes all over the world is the clustering of supermassive black holes, basically. So we know that in the center of any galaxy, there is a massive black hole which accretes matter and gives out a lot of light. Now, uh, what we are finding in our recent results is that you can have double or triple supermassive black holes coming together. And so there could be a clustering of these kind of massive black holes, say, in galaxy groups, pairs. So this is something that we are exploring with multi, multi wavelength data. The second thing that we are looking at using UVIT is we are looking at star formation in these kind of diffuse galaxies or diffuse environments where you don't expect star formation. So there are many parts of galaxies, the outer parts, for example, which are ghost-like. You can't see them. You can barely see them. But you do see star formation in UV. So we are following this up with the UVIT telescope. And uh, lastly, we are using the GMRT to map these galaxies in neutral hydrogen. Because um, hydrogen is the fuel of star formation. Without hydrogen, you can't have star formation in the universe. So we are using the GMRT also to study the gas distribution in galaxies. So this is my um, perspective. Now maybe I'll hand it to Jyoti. Yeah, so currently I am working on uh, star formation and uh, AGN activity in interacting galaxies. So when galaxy interacts, they can significantly uh, affect the properties like their chemical composition, their morphology and their uh, gas content. And uh, as ma'am has mentioned that H1 is the fuel for star formation. So their star formation activity gets altered. 
So we try to understand how the interaction interaction between the galaxies affect the star formation activity in the galaxies. And there is a supermassive black hole sitting at the center, which can also start secreting gas if the galaxies have enough gas to fuel the supermassive black hole. So how that activity uh, starts in the center of uh, the galaxy. So we try to understand uh, these using multi-wavelength data. I would just like to add here is that uh, since uh, I'm uh, collaborating with Moshmi, so uh, some of these things uh, uh, we will do it uh, together hopefully. And then uh, then obviously we as a group, uh, we, we, we work in galaxies. So our idea is uh, to understand uh, various uh, uh, properties that uh, Jyoti has mentioned about the galaxies, how in general they are evolving. But uh, as an individual, I would say that uh, my interest is also taking these uh, uh, aspect to a public. So I, I'm actually uh, also like to work uh, uh, on, on data science actually. So uh, idea is that there is so much data around. So uh, I, I am actually uh, working towards to take it to the public uh, or building a, 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 a citizen science project. So one such effort uh, I have recently done with uh, uh, with another institute, Astronomy Institute uh, uh, at Pune, Ayuka. And then there we have uh, actually uh, developed a citizen science project called uh, uh, One uh, uh, Billion Galaxies, actually. So idea here is that we actually provide uh, a public uh, a colorful images of the galaxies, which have been taken from the uh, one of the biggest telescopes on the Earth, and then ask public to help us to classify various features in them. For example, if they are interacting if they have any other features like a ring around them, uh, if they have any features uh, like a, a dust lane, what we call a dark lanes around them. So the galaxies, if you look at, they comes with a variety of the features. And we basically ask public to, to develop, uh, uh, to help us to classify these features, which basically uh, with, with, uh, with, with these kind of uh, billions of galaxies will ultimately help us to feed into the uh, the machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence kind of uh, 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 programs and help us to uh, to develop uh, these kind of algorithms, uh, which uh, in future uh, we would like to use it uh, when we have a more data. The universe is vast and certainly full of mysteries. Our science community is leaving no stone unturned to unravel the biggest mystery, our evolution. We will come back with more such interesting stories. Till then, thank you for watching.